It works. All right, Are we see. on now? Well, I don't know. We'll be on in, in very shortly. Stream health looks good. <laughs> the what? The stream health looks good. Yeah. All right, here we go. Here we go. We're going live. Live like a suicide. What is going on, everybody? Today on the Metal Voice, the one, the only, Mr. The CEO of the Hall of Heavy Metal History, Mr. Padges Waldo, who is with me. I'm going to show you. Hold on. Here we go. Bada bing. There we go. Padges Waldo. Pat, what's going on, man? Hey, Jimmy. How are you? Uh, if anybody's out there listening and watching, please give me an audio check because these streams tend to have like really shitty audio. But... <laughs> Uh, didn't have a lot of time. So the gala, the Hall of Heavy Metal History Gala, first of all, will be taking place next week, January 23rd, Wednesday, during NAM Week in Anaheim, California, where the list of inductees, you could just go to the website, see the list of inductees. Uh, a phenomenal night. A phenomenal night. And the key, I guess the A-lister here, with a huge A-lister here, would be the one and only Mr. Lee Kerslake, who will be there in person. So quickly, Pat, just give us some details about the Hall of Heavy Metal History to begin. Well, how we started? No, no, just basically about the gala on Wednesday, you know, some details where it's at and how people could get tickets. Yeah, well, January 23rd, uh, Anaheim, California, the, the uh, Delta Marriott. You can get tickets at www.dadprogram.org. Everybody can go there and get a few more tickets left. And, uh, yeah, there's going to be some great inductees this year. Lita Ford, Doro's going to induct her, and Mike Portnoy, and Dave Elfson, and Jeff Scott Soto, and Johnny Z, and Jeff Pilson. And, uh, wow, there's so many great, great people that are going to be there. Johnny and Marsha, of course. Zazula are going to be there uh, getting inducted. Um, Rudy Sarzo, I just found out, is going to induct Jeff Scott Soto. So a lot of good things. All right, so here's the big news that just happened last night. and But it's been happening for a while. <laughs> we won't say it was a, a lot of... And this is how it happened. So Lee Kerslake... Uh, sorry, Ozzy gives Lee Kerslake his dying wish that the Blizzard of Oz certified platinum RIAA discs as well as Diary of a Madman. So let's just go through this whole timeline of what happened. And everybody out there... Um, Tell me if the audio is good or not. I know it's pretty crappy on these live streams. So let's start off with number one. Pat, this is what happened in early November. Pat Giswaldo decided to induct Lee Kerslake and Bob Daisley. And you can maybe just talk about that. Yeah. Well, we have... Hey, Jimmy, by the way, while we're going live here, uh, where can everybody go to get this, this stream? Yeah, it's... See the live stream. Uh, actually, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to send you a link for the live stream. I'm going to post it right on Facebook now. Yeah. Okay? And, okay. Uh, and people could watch it now, I guess, if they but are it watching is, now. But is it on your homepage? You could just go to the Metal Voice YouTube channel, and it's right there. And I, oh, I just and actually I, I just added it to – well, Pat, I'm not going to send it to you. I could, uh, I'll send it to you after, okay? Just, just, so, yeah. just so we don't, won't confuse everybody here right now. Yeah, because I know a couple other people are trying to sign on with us right now. Do we know how many people are on, on with us? Uh, 13 people are watching right now. But what happens is the longer we go, the more people jump on. So Wow. So we need to, so we need to stall here a little bit. So we need like <laughs> 13,000 people right now. Okay? Yeah. Audio is great. So the good news, the audio is great. I'm getting, you know. Uh, so I send out actually an email blast to all the people who are on my email list. And they sort of, you know, they don't see it right away. It's basically 9 a.m. here in Eastern Standard Time. But... Let's let's go through the timeline, and, and this will be replayed for everybody who uh, wants you know wants to watch it later. Hello from Greece. Lefteris is saying hello from Greece. So, uh, oh Bill, nice. Bill is saying list website. So for Bill, I'm going to go to the Hall of Heavy Metal History, and I'm going to put the website for the Hall of Heavy Metal History in the chat. All right. Oh, that's cool. So then that actually comes up. Yeah. All people have to do, but then they're not watching here, right? <laughs> I put the Hall of Heavy Metal History, the website, the link in the chat. So now more people are watching. Okay. So, Pat, let's... Ozzy graciously has given uh, Lee Kerslate his dying wish. Yep. But this it's just didn't happen by magic. This, th there was a lot of work behind this. 
uh, behind the scenes. And, and we have to thank Patches Waldo, the CEO of the Hall of Heavy Metal History, for this. So let's just go through the timeline. Step one. Patches Waldo decided to, in, and his team decided to induct uh, Lee Kerslake, Bob Daisley, because of their first two albums, of Blizzard of Oz and Dark of a Mad Men. You want to speak to that right away? Yes. Um, what we have is uh, originally going back, um, you know, I wanted to do something with the Blizzard of Oz because we had Randy the first year, right? Yeah. So I wanted to do something special for Lee Kerslake and Bob Daisley. So we figured we got together and we wanted to induct them. And <clears throat> Jimmy, you really started the whole ball rolling uh, in a major way because then you decided to do an interview with Lee. Yeah, well, no, let's let's go back one step. So I did an interview with Bob first <clears throat> because you told me that they're both going to be inducted into the hall. And I go, wait, I better, I better talk to Bob and uh, you know talk about this induction and what it means to him. So we and, and we did also. He was promoting his Gary, uh, the Gary Moore album as well. That's right. So, Gar, uh, Bob tells me live, or not live, but on the interview that Lee was dying, or he was you know had eight, like something like eight months to live. So right away, my instincts go, "Wow, I got to talk to Lee. I got to see what's going on here." And uh, I, you know, Bob gave me his number. I made it, did an interview with him, only to find out all the information. Lee had some dying wishes to get the discs to uh, finish his documentary and to finish his album. And of course, come to California and, uh, and interview people for his documentary. So those were his dying wishes. Pat, I told you about it right away. And right away, what did you do? You took out your credit card and you booked a flight for Lee Kerslake to come live to the Hall of Heavy Metal History, which was something I've never seen. And people think this is, this is like a two, $300 ticket. No, he needed special care so he needed a special seating arrangement so here's the number i'm gonna give everybody that the ticket cost seven grand plus all the hotel and he needs their special care because he's a dying man right he's got cancer and pat didn't even think about it he says this is the right thing to do there was no can we cover it there was no i don't have the money for it it was this was the right thing to do we'll find the money and uh, congratulations to that, Pat. So that was step two. Right, Pat? Well, thank you. Well, okay. You want to add something? Yeah, no, thank you. But, you know, I mean, but I wanted to do the right thing. You know, Jimmy, it, it, we, it, it is the right thing to do. Uh, you know, Lee and Bob deserve it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very much so, especially Lee. Yeah, yeah. Um, so after that, you know, the, 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 the report I did, the in-depth report I did, and you could find it on the YouTube channel, The Metal Voice, went everywhere. It went viral. It went to Yahoo News. It went to the Rolling Stone magazine. It went everywhere. And then that even inspired you even more, Pat. And you go, you know what would be great, Jimmy? If we could not only get Lee there, but we could, you know, present the plaques to him. Those RIAA certified plaques to him. That would be historic to finally close the deal. We also found out that Lee wrote a letter to the Osbournes before talking to us, before the inductions, asking kindly, you know, to, you know, there's no more bad blood. Uh, can you please just give me these as my last dying wish? So with the media, with you lobbing the management, with the Metal Voice and sort of like all the show and how viral it went and all the media who supported the Metal Voice in the process, it opened the door to have a conversation with management. You want to talk about your conversation with the Aussie management? Well, yeah, and I'll tell you, um, Jimmy, this could not have happened without you and the Metal Voice, for sure. You. You, everybody needs to know that. This would not have happened without you. Appreciate it. Uh, so, and I really mean that. So once we figured out, and I was actually going to be on that interview with you, with Lee, and then I backed out last minute. I said, no, go ahead, you know, do it with Lee, because yeah, this is all right, about That's right, that's right. For sure, it's, it's all about Lee. So, which is a wonderful thing. So then when I find out, um, you know, after actually watching the interview, I said, all right, so something has to be done. So as you said, you know, I started the whole behind the scenes uh, process. Yeah. So I call the powers that be. Um, we have a discussion and, uh, and they get the ball rolling because I want him to have his discs. 
and, and, and let me interject here, and you missed something. There was a little bit of resistance from management, and, and a rightful resistance, because, well, because of all the bad blood over the lawsuits over the years. Well, listen, Sharon and Ozzy, you know, I, I think um, did the right thing for sure, without a doubt, and kudos to them. Um, but I can understand why there was some apprehension revisiting this whole process now, which is 38 years in the making, right? So, which it really is. I mean, Lee's wanted his discs forever. That's right. So he wanted his Platinum Album Awards. And, and of course, knowing that, and, you know, I felt that, for whatever reason, I wanted to take the responsibility of trying to get that done for him. So that's why I made the calls. You know, I made the calls to, to start the ball rolling. And there was some apprehension at first from Sharon and Ozzy, which I understand because it's, it's a very, you know, tough thing. And, you know, Pat, you know, imagine being sued for 35 years. It's, it's, it's only normal. It's only normal. Uh, Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I would probably do the same thing. Yeah. And, and so we had a discussion about it and what the right thing to do was. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so we figured out what the best thing to do. And, you know, I told Sharon and Ozzy, I said that I – basically wanted them to take the lead on this and and I would um, you know follow through and support it as best as I can especially with our show especially with Lee being inducted right yeah, yeah. so make a long story short I guess um, after our conversations uh, I get a call that that Lee is going to get the discs now he has no idea he's going to get his record awards so uh, and that was some time in the making by the time they developed the whole thing and then actually shipped them to him. So um, that took a little bit of time, too. And, and, and you know, everybody, you and, you know, of course, you knew as well, because I filled you in immediately and Lee's wife, a couple other people. So, you know, that that that. <laughs> we were all kind of really it was very hard for all of us not to say anything because we're all so excited. So, so now okay, go the discs go. So now the discs go to Lee, and he gets them at his house. Okay, and then go ahead. You can take yeah. it. Well, I want to just summarize all of this. Mm -hmm. Basically, bottom line is, you worked behind the scenes with the management, going back and forth to get these discs. They just didn't appear anywhere, right? And I want to give credit where credit is due. Ozzy, big credit. Sharon, big credit, and Pat, big credit as well. You did. You closed the deal. That's how I look at it. You know. Hmm. There's always somebody who has to close a deal and work those behind the scenes, and you did it. And congratulations to Sharon. Congratulations to Ozzy for doing the right thing. Congratulations to Lee for writing a letter, and congratulations to you, Pat. It's it's not an easy task to overturn something for 30-something years, 38 years or so. No, 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 not at all. And, of course, congratulations to you, too, and a huge thank you to you, because without you, none of this would have happened. Yeah, thank so, you. You know, you're an integral part of that whole process. We, we can't forget that because without you, there's none of this. So, you know, and I just wanted to support what you did. And so, uh, yeah, you know, Sharon and Ozzy, they, they did the right thing. I am I am so happy that they did. And, you know, one of the things I said in the conversation, because I was also, you know, kind of the uh, intermediary there for for everybody involved. And I told them, I said, Lee really holds you know, no animosity. Exactly. Anybody. And he told me that. And, and Jimmy, I think he even mentioned it, you know, on your show as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and I wanted them and I'm glad I was able to convey that in person, you know, so because I think that's a big part of it. And and really, they felt the same way. They really they really did. I'm not putting words in their mouth, you know. So the next step uh, was to then work everything out and to get Lee the discs. So, so here's the big news now. So now this is what we're leading up to. So we had the sort of preliminary stuff, getting him inducted, getting him to, uh, to, to the to Hall of Heavy Metal History during NAM Week next week on Wednesday, which hopefully I'll be there and I won't get snowed out. Um, now here's the kicker. So those awards will be shipped to the Hall of Heavy Metal History. Sorry, the gala that is. Yep. They will be sort of presented to him on stage. So for everybody out there who lives in the area, it's the tickets like something like thirty bucks. You can see Lee Curse Lake probably, and I don't want to say this I don't in a mean way, but maybe for the maybe for the last time in California, right? 
I mean, hopefully not. I hope he gets better and he, 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 you know, everything's good. You will get to see the plaques because they will be there. The original plaques that Ozzy sent will be there with the note that I think, Pat, you're going to read there or, or maybe Leo read it or whoever. Yeah. Well, Ozzy wrote, that's the other thing that everybody needs to know. So, um, and I, I don't want to give too much away, but yeah, Ozzy included a personal note, which we're going to read um, when we induct Lee as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is great news. So again, at the gala this year, Lee Kerslake will be, he wasn't scheduled to go there in person, but you put up the money to get him there. He will be in person. He will have his plaques in person. What a great photo opportunity for everybody who wants to be out there. This will be history in the making at the Hall of Heavy Metal History this year. And this is what it's all about, Pat. And this is why I've been so involved in it with you for so many years now, because it makes a difference. It makes a difference for the artist, and it makes a difference for the legacy of heavy metal. Anything to add? Yes. And, you know, the other important part about this part with, with, uh, with Lee is that this is all going to be included in his documentary. So the fans, everybody get to be a part of the documentary yeah. as well, yeah. you know, and that's a crucial part because one thing I said is he wanted two things, right? He wanted the, the record awards and he wanted to finish his documentary. So the other thing we're doing is we're helping him finish his documentary at the show, yeah. which is yeah. very, very important. Uh, that, and, and, and I'm so proud that I'm able to do that, you know, to help him in any way that, that we can. And we want everybody to be part of that too, right, Jimmy? I mean, you know, we want all our friends, we want the fans there to come take part in this monumental event, which is just going to be phenomenal. I, I, I can't believe it. I mean, I remember even listening, and Sharon and I spoke about this, even as a kid, yeah. you know, when this whole thing, so when the albums were recorded. So, you know, as a fan, we're all fans too, right? So <laughs> yeah. I remember this going through the whole my whole childhood adulthood for 38 years yeah yeah me too me too man this is this is this is a historic night and i mean that that's why i'm so anxious to go there it's going to be a snowstorm and i don't even know if my plane's going to get there <laughs> i keep telling everybody yeah, me that too. you know um hopefully it will okay let me go read uh, some comments here okay uh Rich, the Osborne should have picked up the cost, and they did. Just so you know, Rich, that they did pick up the cost, so uh, it's all good. Uh, maybe you mean the cost to fly him in. Well, the Osborne's really, you know, they're not connected to the hall, so they have no reason. But they did pick up the cost for the plaques, so that was much appreciated, and they shipped them in a timely manner. So there you go. Uh, Laura, Nora, hi from Lodi. Okay, I, I don't know where that is. Uh, they totally do. Rich, the Osborne should... Okay, I read that already. Uh, Bill, work plenty of Aussie shows in Detroit. Still have my Diary of a Madman backstage pass. That's very cool. Ren, uh, morning, Jimmy and Pat. Rich, okay, good. What did, I don't know. What did Nora say? Nora, from hi Lodi? from Lodi. I don't know where Lodi is. Lodi. Do you know where Lodi is? Lodi. I do. Is that in New that Jersey? My girlfriend. <laughs> okay, there you go. Uh, what did she say? That's it. Oh, Maybe. just like that. So John says, God bless all involved in making this happen. I think it's wonderful. Peter says, this is so awesome. Dave, about bloody time. Militia says, how, how I wish I could witness that. I agree. Uh, Ren, I hope J.K. Lee can get his writing credits on Bark at the Moon one day as well. True that. Passenger, I've done, you've done a good job here. Thanks for your contributions. And Jimmy, it's Metal Militia. Cool. All right. So, um... Pat, uh, again, going back to the Hall of Heavy Metal history. So this is, I mean, there's really, you know, I, I don't know what more we could add. I, I think a good point that you said was, if you're there at the Hall this year, you will be part of Lee Kerslake's documentary. Because sort of the finale of it all, I guess, would be, I don't know if the finale, but I would put it as a finale, is him receiving his discs on stage with the fans, right? And it's not like, there'll be 10,000 people there. You know, there'll be a lot of people there, but, you know, it, you'll be part of that documentary. Well, which we can only thing. fit so many people. That's right. I mean, it's not a stadium here. It's, a, it's an event, right? It's a gala. Um, this is huge. Also, Lee Kerslake has an album that he's finished and he's looking to uh, promote. 
and maybe get a record label unless he already has one by now. So that's something else of his dying wish uh, with the plaques and the documentary. I'm really looking forward to seeing you, Pat, in person again. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Lee Kerslake again. I'm looking forward to seeing all the inductees. I'm looking forward to covering the event. And I will be covering the event, Pat. I've been covering of the event, Pat. I will be covering yes. probably on Facebook Live a lot of the little stuff here and there, the diaries of it all uh, leading up to it. And then I'll do some videos live. And Pat, you'll be involved. And of course, Lee and everybody else. So everybody stay tuned to the Facebook Metal Voice page, the YouTube Metal Voice page, because that day, Wednesday, all day I'll be doing clips. Be fascinating, Pat. It'll be fascinating. So oh, tell me about be, tell me about the dad's program. Tell me about the dad's program. Yeah, well, dad program drumming and disabilities is my nonprofit uh, that helps children and adults fight disabilities through the modalities of drum therapy. Yeah, and, and, and you know what? Explain that a little more so people understand. It's it's kids who have, I guess, special needs. They found out that drumming, the the sort of the motions of drumming, the body using, you know sort of coordinating itself, drumming, has helped them overcome their, their, their special needs. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, I, I found out I did it for myself as a child, actually. I had a severe battle with dyslexia as a kid. And uh, that I didn't know then that would lead me to pioneer the you know, techniques of drum therapy at the time, of course. But uh, yeah, it retrained the synapses in my brain so that by the time I was in old junior high, I'd beat my disability 100% because it was the repeated exposure to the rhythms and patterns of drumming. That's amazing. Which then led me to do major research studies on it and how it helped and how it helped people that I was you know, working with. And then that led to the DAD program as an actual program. That's amazing. And, and, and just so everybody knows, the Hall of Heavy Metal History is a, uh, a non-profit, correct, or a charity? Yeah, part of the DAD program. Part yep. of the DAD program. So when you when you donate to uh, the Hall of Heavy Metal History, you're donating to, uh, you know, helping kids, right? Uh, Absolutely. Being, you know, with, with with disabilities. So I think that's that's huge, especially for us parents, you know. It's a reality, you know, for a lot of us. Yeah, and unfortunately, you know, parents have no idea what to do when a child is first diagnosed with a disability, no matter what it is, autism, Tourette's, MS, cerebral palsy, Down syndrome, uh, any kind of behavioral issues, or any other type of disability, you know, unfortunately. So we're a great uh, provider and, uh, of, of resources for those families as well. And what better way to get better by playing drums and rock and roll, right? <laughs> that, that's a great, great thing. All right. So everybody, go to the Hall of Heavy Metal History uh, website uh, to uh, purchase tickets, make a donation to, uh, you know, to help. Again, you know, all your donations are much appreciated because with your donations, you know, the Hall can, can, can continue to exist and, you know, uh, and, and to support, you know, not only the charity, but the, the organization and the, uh, the galas and et cetera, et cetera. Pat, uh, do you have any closing words? I want to read the inductees one last time. Yeah, go ahead, Jimmy, if you have them there. I don't but, have them in front uh, of me. Well, you know, we have... Well, the other thing that we didn't mention... Part Saxon. Of the I want to mention Saxon this time around because we, yeah. Nigel Glocker, uh, the drummer Saxon, will be there uh, and they Saxon will be inducted, which is to me is like the ultimate induction, right? No band in the history of metal deserves it more than Saxon. Cranking out the albums year after year, two after tour. Biff and the gang just doing amazing. So... I missed that out last time. I made, wanted to make sure I said that this time around. Want to throw out some other inductees? Yeah. Well, we have, like I said, Lita Ford. And uh, actually, Doro's flying in from Germany to wow. induct her. How great is that? Right? Yeah, That's yeah. really cool. Uh, so we have Doro. We have Mike Portnoy, David Elfson, which is great. Uh, as part of the Blizzard of Oz, we have Max Norman, which is going to be fantastic. Um, we have uh, Jeff Sykes. I'm sorry, John Sykes. Uh, inducting um, Bob Daisley. We have Jeff Scott Soto. And Rudy Sarzo is going to induct Jeff. Pause, we... pause. John Sykes. John Sykes. John When's Sykes. the last time this guy has been out in public? This is like a treat to see John well, Sykes I, inducting. Nobody can believe it. I'm getting just as many calls about Lee. Nobody can believe that he's going to be there. Nobody can believe that John Sykes is going to be there. 
this is an incredible night. Okay, keep going. Sorry. I'm, I'm going to read okay. some out if in case you forget any, okay? Yeah, well, we got Testament as well. Don't forget Testament. Test- oh, my God. Chuck, Billy, and Testament. Isn't yeah. it crazy? Yeah, Go. the whole band's going to be there. Yep. And we have, and of course, the one and only John and Marsha Zazula, right? The, you know, the sort of the the beginning of it all in terms of hard rock and thrash, right? The, the, the pioneers, the people who, who brought us Metallica, right? And who then spun off Megadeth and, and all the other bands, you know, and Anthrax and, and so on and so on, right? John Zazula, great guy. Great guy, fantastic. And uh, really, they really helped, you know, forge the thrash metal scene on the East Coast here, if not throughout the world. Yeah. And uh, we're going to have a very special uh, video induction, let's say, for John and Marsha. Wow, uh, cool, cool. And awesome. that's going to be a huge surprise as well. Uh, Jeff Scott Soto, an incredible talent, Sons of yep. Apollo, and just so many bands, Ingvi Malmsteen, Frank Bello from Anthrax, an incredible bassist who's been there on every single album except maybe the first one, but he was around the band the whole time. KLOS, 50th anniversary, the radio station that brought so much great music, you know, and, and metal, right? Yeah, it's their 50th anniversary. And and how about the special guests in the audience? Give me about, tell me about, like, Wendy Dio is going to be there, right? Oh, yeah. Well, we have uh, some other things as well. Wendy's going to be there. Actually, I just spoke with her last night. Wendy's a dear, dear friend. And uh, Wendy's going to be there. Uh, we're going to have a lot of uh, major record company executives, uh, Carmine Apiece and Vinnie Apiece are going to play with their band, yeah. the Apiece band. And uh, there's going to be a band uh, called Kodiak, a younger band. They're kind of like the Greta Van Fleet, but they're kind of like in a Van Halen style. Yeah, yeah. And uh, there's a lot of major record company executives coming out to look to sign them, possibly. Uh, I know they're going to be there for that reason as well. Uh, we're going to have Butterside opening up the show, which is great. Uh, as well, and Jean Bouvier is going to play a couple tunes as well. Yeah. So it's really going to be a very exciting evening. And, and one well, thing, one thing else we forgot, the reading of the Aussie letter, right? Lee Kersley yeah. got a letter from Aussie. You're going to read it there. I guess you're going to read it there. You should read it there. I mentioned <laughs> it before, but I think oh, yeah. you know somebody wrote a message right now, a text, and I think that's critical. Read the Aussie letter that he sent to Lee on behalf of you know giving the plaques. Is that what the? Is that what the? Uh, Tech set? Yeah. Well, it says, are you going to be reading the letter there? So Yes. We'll yes. be reading the letter. Yes, I will be reading the letter. I've seen it already. So, yes, I will be reading the letter there. Can't give everything away before, right? You got to give people a reason to come, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jimmy, it's going to be amazing. Pat, I don't think I don't think you've heard. Rudy Sarzo is going to be there, right? Yeah. Rudy. Yeah. Rudy's going to uh, be uh inducting uh jeff scott soto yeah that's and i mean there's and there's a lot more yeah i know i'm trying to i'm trying to convince bobby blitz to be there and Mm -hmm. he said he might be there so who knows you never know overkill right it's hard sometimes because i know you know a lot of fans ask that question well why not this one why not that one how come this one's not there sometimes it's you know it's very difficult because who's on tour who has other obligations so the whole process is at least at least six months, seven months to get everything lined up and do the whole show, especially 3,000 miles away here in New Jersey, you know? Yeah, yeah. No, no. Kudos to you, Pat. I mean, you are you, you are doing everything the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is not doing, right? <laughs> There's well, a po- then it's a popularity contest. You, it's more of a musician's musician's who deserves it. I mean, of course... Sometimes it's a hit and miss, right, with the fans, like because it's it's subjective, right, at the end of the day, right. But I think you get it right ninety five percent of the time. Yeah, I, well, I think it's one hundred percent of the time, but it depends on the fans and you know what their opinions are for themselves. Exactly, you know? exactly, exactly, and that's kind of what I meant. That we induct uh, is definitely worthy of being in there for sure. You know, right. without a doubt. So I think that's pretty much it. The Hall of Heavy Metal History this week, January twenty third, during Nam Week. Uh, again, we mentioned all the, uh, the the celebrities that'll be there. We mentioned all the inductions and Lee Chris Lake, the big draw this year, the big draw. All right, Pat. Hey, Jimmy. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Look forward to seeing everybody very, very soon. A few more days. All right, man. Talk later. <laughs>